Good morning, everyone. It is 6 a.m. Time for another episode of Eco Brap Towing. Uh, this is probably the most important episode we've ever done because we are towing 3,200 pounds in our fully electric crossover. The car is a 2019 Kia Niro EV. There's two main things that we're checking for on this trip, stability and range. And stability, you know, it's a relatively small car towing, you know, over 3,000 pounds. So it's important that we see if it's realistic to tow this much with this kind of a car or if we'll have to downsize and get a smaller car to tow. And the second thing is range. You know, the, the pessimists of what I'm doing here say there's no way you're going to get more than 60 miles out of this while towing that much weight. Um, I'm more of an optimist on this front and I'm guessing about a 50% range drop, which would still give us uh, 120 miles ish something like that this is only the second time that we've charged this car to a full 100% charge and the reason for that is you know it's not great to charge an electric car to 100% it's ideal to keep it between about 20 to 80% and it'll help the batteries last longer but you know we have to use it in this case so we fully charged no big deal it'll only happen about once a month uh, I'm gonna keep it around 55 miles an hour that's the towing speed limit in California I'm gonna do my usual hypermiling technique, so mainly it's just trying to coast as much as possible. It's not as important in this car because we have regenerative braking, but regenerative braking is not 100% efficient, so it's still better to coast in a lot of scenarios. But at least in this case, if we do pick up too much speed on a downhill, we can regen, so it should actually be pretty efficient. Enough chit chat, here we go. Uh, it's about a 75 mile trip, 3,200 pounds in tow. We're definitely gonna be pushing the boundaries here, but let's give it a whirl. fun begins we just hit San Francisco traffic unfortunately I left a little later than I wanted to this morning but I just slowed down from 55 60 miles an hour to 7 miles an hour without touching the brake pedal towing 3,200 pounds the regenerative braking in this car is capable of about 125 horsepower worth of braking potential so all of that that I just slowed down uh, about 70% of it something like that went back into the battery it slowed me down with no problems that was awesome uh, I'm not gonna lie my hand was on the brake controller ready to hit the trailer brakes just in case I needed a bit of additional help but didn't need to because I was looking far enough ahead so when I was doing my 20 miles per gallon while towing series I was always terrified of hitting traffic like this because it was gonna compromise my fuel mileage in the EV here I'm not entirely convinced that this will kill my mileage too much because I'm not idling. I'm just using whatever energy I need. That's kind of the advantage of EVs. Um, and who knows, maybe it'll help just because I'm going so slow and not hitting the brakes at all, just coasting along nicely. Okay, now that now that's a little bit more light out uh, and we're just putting through San Francisco in traffic, uh, figured I'd talk about what my first impressions were for the highway trip up to San Francisco. Does it tow as well as my eco diesel truck would have towed up here? Obviously not. It's a small little hatchback crossover -y thing. It's not going to tow as well. Did it tow just fine? Yes. I feel like I was not white knuckled at any point. I was just cruising along. You can definitely feel a little bit of the kind of perky jerky that the trailer will push and pull on the on the car just a tiny bit but it was nothing crazy concerning remember I do have airbag suspension in the back of this uh, which I will go over once we get to the track I'll go over everything that I've done but that's one thing that might have helped with stability on the road as for power that the car has almost 300 pound-feet of torque so it's actually legitimately pretty quick 
uh, I would be more concerned about traction than power because it's got so much torque and I'm pulling so much weight. If I goosed it right now off the line, almost certainly would rip the tires to shreds. So who knows, maybe at some point I'll upgrade the tires to a, a sportier compound that'll get me a little bit more traction, but I haven't had any wheel spin here. I'm just saying like if I really goosed it on a hill or something, it's gonna, it's gonna spin the tires. I'm using about, let's see, about half throttle right now to maintain speed up this pretty steep grade. It's probably like 10, 15% tops. Um, but it's only about two miles long, so I'll let you know if I feel anything weird, but right now it feels great in sport mode. Okay, we're approaching the top of the hill now. Zero problems whatsoever getting up that hill. It's only about two miles long, so it's not a great test, but it's a decent slope. And uh, I never had to use more than half throttle to get up the hill, even though we are pretty much capped out on load here. Okay, we're heading down a pretty steep grade now. I have not hit the brakes once. I'm not even in the highest regen setting. I'm just kind of cruising between the first and second regen settings and it's doing just fine. What's really nice is in my diesel truck, if I wanted to be super efficient, I would fly down this hill at Mach 3, trying to not lose any efficiency to brakes. But here I can just regen as I like to keep the speeds nice and sensible. And I'm not losing too much efficiency on this front. So I know a lot of you guys have probably been wanting an efficiency update on this trip. We are currently 51 miles in we've got 22 miles to go and I'm not gonna give you any spoilers yet I'll wait till we get to the track to give you a full update but I'm not gonna have to stop and charge on the way up there we're gonna do just fine getting up there which is great Alright, only 15 miles to go. I didn't get much sleep last night, so I'm gonna pull off and uh, swing by a Starbucks real quick. Okay, short on ramp on the freeway. It's also uphill pretty steep. Off we go, 20 miles an hour, 25, 30. Little bit of traction control there, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, good to go. Okay, here we are, Sonoma Raceway. We're gonna check in and then we'll park up and give you an update on our range. We are at the track, we have parked up, and it's time to show you what our efficiency was. So we traveled exactly 75.7 miles. So for the pessimists out there that thought we would run out of juice 15 miles ago, we did make it here on one charge. And for the optimists that think we could get about 120 miles of range here, that would signify we arrived here after traveling 75 miles with probably about 30 or 40% battery life left. Let's take a look. 62% battery life left. The computer is showing us that we're averaging about 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour, which considering that the capacity of the battery in this car is 64 kilowatt hours, that would be an effective range of about 180, 190 miles. Unbelievable, I'm really stoked about this. I've been telling people for a long time that the only things that hamper your fuel mileage when you're towing are 
you know, tire and bearing resistance, but more importantly, aero resistance. And because the car is kind of tucked up nicely against the, uh, the back of the car, it's really not encountering too much drag. So even though it weighs 3,200 pounds, we're not getting a colossal drop in efficiency, only about 30%, something like that, which is amazing. That being said, what we'll do is we'll jump out, I'll give you a little tour of the car, the trailer, and all the goodies we installed to make this happen. Hey everyone, so we're all packed up at the track. While I was at the track, I used a uh, ChargePoint solar charger just to give it a little top up on Saturday. And then I did like a little 10 minute burst at a DC fast charger near the house. So we're currently sitting at 77% battery. I will be taking a slightly different route home, not through San Francisco this time. I'm gonna go around the East Bay, which is longer. It's also a bit of a Wild West rodeo because the road is terrible. So it should be a good test of stability if we do take that route. We were able to get some crazy efficiency on the way up. We're gonna try and do the same thing on the way back. But in order to do that, I've gotta do my final modification to make sure we can be as efficient as possible. driving for about five to 10 miles west. And uh, again, all the power shutoffs that are happening here are due to the massive winds. So there were some hefty crosswinds and it was a good place to test how stable the car was. But funnily enough, it actually felt better than my old truck and trailer did, probably because I'm towing an open trailer. There's not a lot of lateral area for the wind to push against and it kind of just went over and under and I really didn't feel too much. It was, it was good. Okay, so that bridge, there was a massive crosswind and it was directly perpendicular to where we were going. So I felt that one, but uh, I wouldn't say it was any worse. And I still think it was probably better than, you know, towing a, a 24 foot box trailer. That would, that would have been a nightmare on that bridge today. Okay, we made it back home. It was a bit of a longer trip than the way up. On the way up, we did 75 miles. On the way down, we did 85. And if you recall, we left the parking lot at the track with 77% battery, and we arrived with 34. So we used 43% of our battery on that 85 mile trip, which means we averaged 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour. Our average speed was uh, just over 40 miles an hour. So it was pretty, pretty slow. We got stuck in a fair amount of traffic, but it was a good test anyways. So in conclusion for our towing trip, we traveled 160.2 miles. We averaged 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour total. And we used a total of 81% of our battery on that trip. 
So the next thing you might be wondering was, oh, okay, well, what is our range while towing 3,200 pounds? If we use the dash reading of 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour and our battery pack is 64 kilowatt hours, that means we would have a range of 185.6 miles, which is pretty crazy. That's only about a 33% drop in efficiency. What's crazier is if we use the battery calculation where we used 81% of our battery, that would yield a range of 197.7 miles. But obviously in this case, we don't wanna risk it for the biscuit that much. So we're gonna use the lower estimate. So our range is about 185 miles, assuming all goes well. Interesting because the furthest track we go to is Thunder Hill, which we will do next year. That's 186 miles each way. Whether we decide to go for it or we stop and do you know, a 15 or 20 minute charge along the way, to be decided, but stay tuned for that one. And just before we shut the car off, you know, the, the 2.9 number is really good, but you might be asking, well, how hard is the car working while towing 3,200 pounds, even through you know, little foothills of California? Well, we've got this interesting feature on the car that tells us um, how aggressively we're driving. And I reset this when we left Sonoma Raceway. So the car thinks that I was driving economically for 88% of the time, normally for 12% of the time, with zero aggressive pulls, even while hauling the 3,200 pounds up to speed. So the car really didn't struggle. Uh, I'll go over the issues that I think might be a problem later, but uh, the car itself did really, really, really well. Now, moving on to my favorite part of this video. We came into this with a goal of getting 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour, uh, and that was our upper goal, so we smashed that. And the reason it was our goal in the first place was, number one, a range thing. I wanna make sure that this is feasible, uh, especially for me towing to all my local racetracks, and if it wasn't very efficient, I'd have to stop and charge everywhere. But in this example, I could have made the whole 160 mile trip and still had you know almost 20% battery left over. So we smashed that goal, and that brings me to the second reason why we wanted to beat that 2.5 number. The EPA rates electric cars and compares them to MPG from a gas car. And it uses this metric where it compares one gallon of gas to 33.7 kilowatt hours of battery usage. What does that mean in English? Well, my car spits out the miles per kilowatt hour reading, which in this case was 2.9. And if I wanna see what equivalent MPG that is, I would multiply it by 33.7, which is 97.73 miles per gallon. According to the EPA number, we got 97 miles per gallon while towing 3,200 pounds. So that's the EPA like federal number, and it really doesn't make sense to use it because it totally depends on where the energy comes from. If you're in a coal dependent state, the number is probably gonna be lower than 33, but I live in California and we have decent energy production here, so our number is probably gonna be higher than 33. I calculated it to be about a 40X multiple in California, and that's as a state average. The Bay Area is even better than the state average, but let's just use California as a whole for now. It means we just got the equivalent from an emissions perspective of 116 miles per gallon while towing that 3,200 pound load. Absolutely crazy, and I'm totally stoked about this. And typically the response to that kind of efficiency is, oh, well, the batteries are bad to produce. And it's totally true. The batteries for an electric vehicle are really bad to produce and it takes time to offset that through the savings that we have here. Um, just under regular street driving, I calculated for this Kia Niro with a 64 kilowatt hour battery pack using California energy emissions and kind of a middle range battery production estimate. It's about 19 to 20,000 miles before this car will break even, which sounds like a lot, but at the same time, when you consider the car has a 100,000 mile powertrain warranty, this car is gonna be doing good things for at least 80% of its life. And yes, that's gonna be a totally separate video on how I calculated that. And in the off season, I might even make this little Excel spreadsheet calculator where you can punch in your own variables, what car you're looking at, compared to your old car, what state you live in for your energy production, and it'll tell you how long it'll take to break even with that car that you buy. So yes, we do not deny that battery production is bad, but in the grand scheme of things, the EV is still way better for the environment, especially in a state with good energy production. So the next thing people might be interested in is how much did this trip cost me? So using the data from the dash, not the battery percentage, which is our worst case scenario here, uh, we used 55.24 kilowatt hours of energy here. 
And if I use my home price of 22 cents per kilowatt hour, it costs me $12.15 to travel 160 miles towing my race car. Awesome. To compare what we did previously with our diesel truck and we were hypermiling like crazy, the best we saw was 23 miles per gallon while towing our race car, which is still pretty crazy. Um, but that would have cost us $27.86, so it's over two times cheaper than the most efficient diesel setup we did. Obviously, this is going to vary on where you charge, how much your energy costs are. In reality, it actually costs us less because we did do a bit of free solar charging at the track. But if we do fast charging instead, it might end up being more than that. But regardless, there's no way it's going to be more expensive than what we're doing with our crazy efficient diesel setup. So final notes, how do I think the Kia towed? Obviously, like I said, it will never tow as well as a pickup truck, but I was never white knuckled at any point of the trip. I did not feel stressed out at all. Really the only thing that I noted was that it's front wheel drive on eco tires. So if I was on a hill in San Francisco and I really tried to goose it off the line, it would just do an occasional little chirp from the tires, so just thought I'd mention that, but that was really the only thing that I ran into. As for stability, it was really good, even in the pretty monstrous, you know, 40, 50 mile an hour crosswinds on the way back. Uh, obviously, I felt it, you'll feel any crosswind like that, but it was nothing more than my truck and trailer did previously. As for acceleration capability, I think this thing would outpull my Eco Diesel towing its max eight or 9,000 pound capacity. It is a really quick car, especially from that like 20 to 50 range that really matters in most scenarios. Braking, I pretty much never used the brake pedal, believe it or not, on that whole trip. Maybe a few times in little traffic when someone would cut me off. But for the most part, I just used the really good regen of this car and it put power back into the battery and probably attributed to how efficient it was. But in those few instances that someone did pull out in front of me, I would hit the brake pedal, my brake controller would go off, send power to the brakes on the trailer, and it would activate them nicely. As an interesting note for the other EV nerds out there, when I'm regening aggressively, the brake lights on the car do come on, but it doesn't trigger the brake controller. The brake controller somehow only works when I actually press the brake. So I can regen aggressively without wasting energy with the trailer brakes, but if I do need as much stopping power as possible, I just hit the brakes like usual and trailer brakes kick on and slow us down really, really fast. So that's pretty much it. You know, this series, and we're gonna keep doing it next year, it's all about proving two main things. Number one, EV towing is feasible, even at an affordable price point. This car costs me 43 grand, and if I, which is expensive for a Kia hatchback, but if I subtract the $10,800 of government incentives and tax rebates that I'm gonna get, this is more like a 32 or $33,000 car. Even if I factor in my home charging outlets and charger and hitch installation and brake controller, all that stuff, I'm still coming out to less than 35 grand out the door. That is less than your average new car in the US and we're doing it fully electric, saving a bunch of money on operational costs in the meantime. As for what's next, we're going to keep doing episodes like this, um, you know, driving to different tracks. We'll even be doing a cross-country trip to Utah next year for our national championship. It'll be fun to try that one out and see how feasible that's going to be. We're also going to try some different things, maybe try towing a boat, uh, including obviously launching it. Uh, Front-wheel drive on a launch ramp might not work too well, but we'll give it a shot just so you guys know. And something else that I'm interested in doing is doing some of the actual towing tests that manufacturers do to rate their vehicles for towing. Starting and stopping on a steep hill, braking distance, understeer control, sway control, handbrake holds on a steep hill, all that stuff. I think I'm going to try and do a video to see if the Nero EV would be rated for this 3200 pound load at that manufacturer standard. It should be pretty interesting. But either way, thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. Catch you guys next time.